Hey, uh, what's going on, everybody? Uh, welcome to uh, another Devotion of Hope. Uh, excited to be able to connect with you in a new format. Looking forward to getting back to connecting with you in the old one. Uh, kind of an interesting week this week, uh, learning how to practice social distancing. So um, I imagine a lot of you are dealing with the same things we're dealing with here. Uh, looking forward to being able to connect with you in person, though. Uh, we're going to have to have like a hug it out, handshake, back slap and party or something within th when this thing's all over. Um, anyway, so uh, just a couple quick things. If you're struggling to figure out how to watch a video on YouTube or anything like that, please take time to call us at the church. Uh, we have people that are more than willing to walk you through that so that you have access to these devotions. It's one of the ways we're staying connected and encouraging you. And I hope, I hope uh, that you're enjoying these short devotions. We're actually working on taking some of my favorite sermons over the last six years and converting them into devotions of hope and getting those out to you to help you get fed with the Word of God, to speak words of encouragement over you, and to just help you stay connected. Um, sometimes it's hard to stay connected when we're alone. And so I just uh, am wishing the best for you. I am praying for you all the time. Uh, one of the ways I can stay connected to you is your pastor. And today's devotion of hope is going to be from Hebrews chapter 13. So let me read that to you. Hebrews 13 uh, verses 1 through 8. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together in prison with them, and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were mistreated. Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have, because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my shepherd, I will not be afraid, what can mere mortals do to me? And remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of, the, of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that's the word of the Lord, and it is a good word. Man, interesting. Keep on loving one another. Keep on loving one another. I was thinking about that a little bit this week. And sometimes some people are really, really easy to love. They just, they brighten your life uh, they add to it, and it's just really easy to love people like that. And sometimes, sometimes love takes work. Love takes work. But we're commanded that we are to keep on loving one another. And that doesn't just mean our favorite people. We're supposed to love all of our brothers and sisters in Christ. We're actually supposed to love, show the love of Christ to all those that we come into contact with. You know, it's interesting. There's supposed to be this special love uh, that exists between us as followers of Jesus Christ. Jesus actually said that this would let people know that we belong to him. John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35 say this, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. You know, it, it seems that uh, over the years, uh, we should have got this. We should have got this. But there are times when loving is a lot of work, and, and I get that. Um, but we're commanded to love each other. God loves us. Um, he takes care of us. And I believe that he's empowered us to love. So we're to love one another. And then there's this other thing in there that says we're supposed to show hospitality as strangers. And it says that by doing so, some have even shown hospitality to angels. And there are so many questions I have when I read that. And you might have some of those questions too. Um, 
But what I can take from that that's definite is that we're supposed to be a people that show hospitality. You know, I have this interesting thing that happened just a while ago. You know, when I, when I was a young believer, I had uh, this pastor share with me and she told me that, uh, hey, just so you know, if you're ever out and about, the Nazarene church is a very big family and make sure you reach out to them if anything comes up. And so I had a daughter that was getting ready to travel to Virginia on her first air flight to interview for graduate school. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to try it. I'm going to reach out to a church out there and I'm going to see if if uh, this is true. It was almost like a, a test for me. And so I call this little church in Marion, Virginia, uh, Marion First Church of the Nazarene, actually. And uh, a lady answers the phone and I get to visit with her and she's the pastor's wife and just just a wonderful lady. And I call and I go, hey, I have this daughter Um, Her name's Alex, and she's going to be flying out to Virginia uh, to interview for graduate school, and it's going to be her first big trip by herself, and I'm a little bit nervous about it, and uh, I ask if maybe when uh, she's there, someone could maybe meet with her or say hi to her or check up on her or show her around a little bit, and she starts asking me for details, and she goes, hey, your daughter can just stay with us. We have everything set up for that. Um, Why doesn't she just stay with us instead of staying in a hotel? I'm like, okay, I'll talk to her about that. And then she says, where is she flying into? And I I tell her, and it's like an hour away. And she goes, well, why don't we just pick her up from the airport and drop her off? And what transpires is they literally, they pick my daughter up from the airport. They take care of her while she's in Marion. And then they take her back to the airport when it's all over. And it's this beautiful experience where my, my kid experiences the love of the church. And their hospitality was completely next level. It, it's amazing. I almost felt a little bit ashamed uh, of my hospitality when I was hearing about how well uh, they treated my kid. Um, we should have great hospitality. We should just really be able to love on people through hospitality. Uh, sometimes we can get so busy taking care of those that are closest to us and distrusting those that are not like us that we forget the difference that a little bit of kindness can make in somebody's life. Man, if I were you, I'd look for every opportunity you can to show somebody a little bit of kindness and then grow and learn to develop good hospitality. Uh, right now, a lot of people are experiencing isolation, um, and some loneliness with social distancing. It's, it's kind of a weird thing and a new thing for us. Um, I'm kind of a, a hugger, especially in the church environment where people don't think it's weird. Uh, just so you know, if you just walk up to people and hug them, sometimes they feel a little weird about it. Especially if you're a big guy with a beard. It just doesn't go how, how you think it's going to go, maybe. It doesn't even matter if you're smiling. Just saying. Anyway, um, when this, when this thing's all over, we're going to have to have like a hug, back slapping, handshaking party uh, when we're able to come back together as the body of Christ. Maybe we'll have to get that together and have a, hey, we're coming back together event or something. Uh, I'll run that by a few folks that are way better at that stuff than I am. But just so you know, I miss that part of our relationship. And a lot of people are missing that right now. And they're experiencing a new kind of loneliness during this time. Uh The next thing our scripture tells us to do is remember those in prison. It says, continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison and those who are mistreated as if you yourself were suffering. You know, a quick fact, and not everybody knows it, but over 10% of Christians in the world are suffering persecution for their faith. 10% of Christians in the world are literally persecuted on a regular basis for being followers of Jesus Christ. We're talking about the most loving, generous, hospitable people in the world that suffer for their faith constantly. We are so blessed to live in a place where persecution is very minimal, where we have the ability usually to gather together on a regular basis, to worship our God, to read his word, 
Um, we are just really a blessed people, but we have brothers and sisters that we should remember in prayer, that we should have a burden for, that are literally suffering for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, secondary thought I had right there in our scripture is, you know, those that are written off by society aren't written off by God. God literally sent his son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believes in him, would not perish, but have eternal life, would be able to enter into an eternal relationship with him. God cares about outcasts. Um, God cares about those that are in prison, those that are have done wrong, and those that have been cast off by society. And it's important for us to remember that because we are the people of God. And literally, we have opportunities to love people in the name of Jesus and to be his hands and his feet in our world and to love Sometimes some people that don't seem very lovable or lovely. Sometimes people are prickly. Sometimes there's social stigmas that go with uh, people's conditions. Um, man, we're just to love people. Just remember that just because uh, the world's cast people off doesn't mean that And we're God's people. And we should show God's love to those that we run into um, every opportunity that we get. Uh, the next thing it says in here is to have compassion on those that are suffering. And, and literally, when we read about that, it says, hey, treat those in prison as though you're in prison with them, um, share in people's sufferings. Uh, for those that are mistreated, um, think of them as though you yourself are suffering. And what that's really saying is that your pain, your pain is my pain. Uh, we should share each other's burdens. If one thing... It is one thing to be moved. It's another thing to act on those things that we feel. Which one of you, if you saw a kid that was in danger or suffering, could stand by and do nothing? And I think most of us um, in that situation would say, I would absolutely have to do something. Well, there are literally those that are suffering, those that are hungry, um, even in our community and in our world all the time. And we should be compassionate and find ways to show them the love of Christ, to show them compassion, to pray for them, to treat their, their suffering as though it is our suffering, literally to find ways to join in that burden with them. Yet, uh, we really don't do very good at that because out of sight for most people becomes out of mind. Uh, we literally are so blessed as a people that uh, the suffering of others sometimes seems like it's far away from us, almost like it's a story or a fantasy, but it is a present reality. And then it says in Hebrews that we're supposed to stay pure. It says marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Um, just so we're clear, if you didn't know this already, the world offers a lot of alternatives to purity. Um, it has really made immorality the norm. Marriage in itself, um, to some, has become a piece of paper. Um, just so you know, marriage is a covenant. It's a commitment. It's life long. It's between a couple, um, their community, and their God. It's something to be honored, invested in, and when it's hard, worked at. Folks, um, if you're married... And if you're cooped up in the house together right now because you're practicing social distancing and at this point in time you've spent so much time together that you want to kill each other, I just want to let you know, knock it off. Knock it off. Um, learn to love one another well. Uh, do everything you can to, to love your marriage. It is an awesome honor and privilege to have that in your life. And it says to be content. And this is totally countercultural. It says, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Sometimes it's hard to be content. We just want to accumulate things. I, I don't know why that is. It's just a fact of life. Um, I imagine if you looked in most of our sheds or our garages, you would find an accumulation of things that we had to have that we forgot about that have been hanging on the wall forever. Um, if you checked out some people's houses right now, you'd probably find an accumulation of toilet paper. Cause I can tell you, I can't find any right now anywhere. And I'm down to my last two rolls. If you want to help out, just so you know, um, 
Okay, maybe that was a bad joke. My wife's not here to tell me no. Um, we can waste so much time running after vain and temporary pursuits. Our whole lives can slip through our fingers as we're trying to have and do and accumulate more. And we miss the simple things, the good things. We forget to be content with our family that might be healthy. We forget to be content that we have a beautiful area that we live in, that there is a sunrise literally every morning that is absolutely gorgeous, that we live in this beautiful green valley and we can just lose our contentment and want more and become inward focused and miss all the precious things that are going on around us. We need to learn to be content. We need to learn to be content. Uh, the reality is you, you can't take it with you, but you can leave a legacy. You can invest in relationships, in loving others. You can invest in things that are more permanent than those things that are now sitting in your garage in boxes. And the last thing there is God is so much better. God is so much better. Um, a relationship with God lived out, lived out, it is so much better than all the things we can run after. I mean, there are so many things that can eat up our time. But I, I just want to let you know that the God that literally created all the good things that we see around us, um, that created the stars in the sky, the trees on the hill, um, literally this earth, uh, created all that, um, created everyone, but he still has us individually in mind. And he wants a relationship with us and a close relationship where we talk to him and we know him and he's constantly working to reveal himself to us. He's given us the word of God. He's given us creation. He's given us his Holy Spirit. He is a guy that has given and given and given to us in order to have relationship with us, even to the point where he gave his own son, Jesus Christ, on the cross in order that we might enter into relationship with this perfect, wonderful God that's the creator of everything. Um, I like that it says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever in this scripture. And I'm just going to leave off with that thought. The same Jesus that gave his life for us, that loved us 2,000 years ago, is the same Jesus that loves us today. Same Jesus. And he sits at the right hand of God, literally making intercession for us. I mean, I just imagine God up there um, in heaven, and it's hard for me to imagine. And here is Jesus at his right hand. And I imagine he's like, hey, look at my servant Joshua. Look at my servant um, so-and-so. Man, I love them. And look at their love for you. And look... Look at the things that they're doing. And I believe that he just speaks good things to God um, about us and for us. And just to know that we have this advocate in heaven is just this amazing thing for me. Jesus is literally still interceding for us today, just like he did 2,000 years ago on the cross. And that makes me exceedingly hopeful. And hopefully it gives you a little bit of hope today too. So uh, like us on Facebook, find us on YouTube, subscribe to our page, set up notifications, and you'll know every time we post. And uh, I guess I'm signing off till next time. God bless you and keep you. Uh, and we'll see you soon.